In today's video, we're going to build a small example scene utilizing the various effect layers and features available in GScatter to create a dynamic environment. That is, an environment where the plants grow together as they would in real life. I've broken this into two parts. In part one, we'll prep everything. I'll show you how to obtain the assets we'll need, how to install them into GScatter, and then how to add them to our scene so that they're ready to be worked on. And in part two, we'll build the scene itself. I'll be manipulating the various assets we've installed to create a realistic environment. OK, here we go. Before anything else, the first thing I need to do is look at some reference images. For this scene, I want to create a typical field meadow. So I'll be using photos taken on one of the famous Grassfeld scanning trips. If you want these photos, there's a link in the description. We have some grass, stinging nettles, cow parsley, some sticky willy, hey, no laughing at the back, meadow foxtail, barren brome, and burdock too. The plants we'll be using are also listed in the description. Now we know what kind of plants we'll need, let's head over to the Grassfeld site. To access the web store, we'll first need to sign up for a free account using the Try It Free button. Clicking on this takes us to the login and sign up page. To sign up, just click on the sign up link here. Either use the sign up with Google option or enter a valid email address. And a password. And then click on continue. You'll be sent a confirmation email to the address you supplied. In the meantime, on the next page, you just need to fill in a few details that tell us a little about yourself and then click on Continue. The last stage of sign up is to create a workspace. As the information says, a workspace is where you'll store all your purchased assets. Just enter a unique name in the field provided and click Continue. OK, once we're in, we can see our account profile. And if we click on this, there's the workspace we created. This is a free account. And this means we can browse the store, but also download all assets marked with a free badge. Now, for our purposes for this video, we want to download some other assets which are available in the Field Meadow Ecotope. And we'll need to upgrade to obtain them. This can be done in two ways. One is to click on the Upgrade button inside of our account profile, or click on the bigger Upgrade button to the right. And this will take us to the Plans page, where we can see the available subscription options. We're going to choose Personal. We can subscribe to a yearly or monthly plan. I'll pick Monthly. And on the next page, we'll just need to provide some details and click Continue. Which will take us to the Payment page. Just fill in the fields with your payment information and then click on Subscribe Now. Once you're subscribed, you'll see the Confirmation page. Details of your order will be emailed to you. Back inside the Grassfold store, if you click on your account profile, you'll see that the workspace you created now has 40 coins. On this plan, you'll receive 40 coins every month for the duration of your subscription. Right, let's go and get those assets. Now, I know that I'm creating a field meadow scene, and I also know that the references are what led to the creation of the field meadow ecotope here. So in this case, I'll simply browse for the plants in that ecotope. OK, orchard grass is first on the list. Don't forget, the list is available in the description below. We select the asset and that shows us the price in coins. Each plant asset is worth 5. We select the file format we need. In this case, it's Blender GScatter. This will indicate the file size. And then we click on Download. I'm downloading the files to a folder that I've set up specifically for this scene, but it can be any folder you like. Just remember where you save them. The next one we need is Stinging Nettle. And as you can see, this plant is free. As before, we make sure the Blender GScatter option is selected and click on Download. We'll just work our way through the list until we've downloaded all the assets on it. Bear in mind that there are two versions of Great Burdock available in the store, a big and a small variant, and you'll need to download both of these, as indicated here, for the scene. 
Once we've got all the plants we need for the scene, we'll launch Blender and open up the G-Scatter interface by pressing on the N key. For this scene, we'll add a plane that we'll use for arranging our assets onto. We'll scale it up a little. We'll add some subdivisions. And then we'll make that plane into an emitter by clicking on the G-Scatter Emitter drop-down and selecting it from the list. Now, nothing else happens yet because we have to install the assets that we've just downloaded. We do this by clicking on the Library icon, which opens up the G-Scatter Asset Browser. Ordinarily, when you install the G-Scatter add-on, it comes with a few free assets. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, I've cleared everything out so that we can more easily see what's going on. So, to install our downloaded assets, we click on the Install Assets button. We navigate to where we placed our downloaded files. We select all of the downloaded files and click on Install. Once that's done, if you open up the G-Scatter Asset Browser again, you can see that all the assets we downloaded have now been installed. You'll also notice that there are more than the eight plants we downloaded. Well, there are eight plants, but each asset comes with some variants such as big, small, or dead, and so on. This means we can add even more variety to our scenes for added realism. Okay, before we move on to part two of this tutorial, the only thing left to do is add the assets to our scene. We can do this in one of two ways. If you click on the name of an asset, you'll see we get some options. I've covered presets in a previous video, but Level of Detail allows you to choose how detailed you want the asset meshes in your scene to be, with zero being the highest resolution and great for detailed close-up views, and higher numbers being a progressively lower resolution which is perfect for assets that are further away from the camera and don't need to be viewed in detail. We also have two buttons. The first is Scatter Selected, which scatters the selected asset using some default settings onto the emitter we've chosen. And the second is Add to Scene, which simply adds one iteration of the asset to the scene to the Blender Outliner, but doesn't attach it to any emitter. For this video, we're going to use Scatter Selected for all of the assets we downloaded from the GrassFile store. We'll also use Level of Detail 2 because we won't be using a close-up camera. We'll start with the Orchard Grass, the big variant. Then the Stinging Nettle, big variant. Then Sticky Willy, big variant. Great Burdock Big and Great Burdock Small. Meadow Foxtail Small. Then Barren Brome Small. And last of the plants, Cow Parsley. We'll want both big and small variants of this. OK, we can now close the G-Scatter Asset Browser. And here are the plants we've just added as scatter systems in the G-Scatter Outliner. You can also see them scattered on the emitter. We'll just switch off the visibility for now. The only other asset we want for our scene is rocks. I've already downloaded some free rocks from Polyhaven and chosen the one I like and added it to my Blender scene. If you want to grab them too, the link is in the description. Right, that's it for part one. We've learnt how to open up a free account with Grassfeld and then upgrade it so we can download the plants we've seen in the reference pictures. We've covered how to find and download these plants, and then how to install them into G-Scatter and add them to our scene using the Level of Detail and Scatter Selected options. In Part 2, we'll build the scene using effect layers to closely match how real plants grow in a typical field meadow. Thanks for watching.